Hello everyone, this is Leanne from Of Love and Chip Lap and the founder of Sub That Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials on YouTube and Facebook. Please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss out on any of our tutorials. Tonight I have a fun, quick and easy tutorial in Affinity Photo. We're going to be using Affinity Photo 2.0, but all of the same steps will apply if you're using the 1.0 version. Keep in mind that the 2.0 version of any of the Affinity softwares still has all of the same tools and functions from the 1.0 version. It just has a new and improved interface, the addition of more tools and functions, and one of the only real differences is just things like the icons in our export or for our different personas and also our tools panel do look a little bit different than the old ones did. You can always hover over anything on your interface to find out what that is, which is of course very helpful when you are trying to navigate changes like this. So you can follow along with either the 1.0 or the 2.0 version for this quick little tutorial. Keep in mind that if you enjoy this tutorial and you want to learn all about all of the capabilities of Affinity Photo, we have the Affinity Photo Digital Graphic Design Masterclass for Sublimation. This is specifically geared towards those who are doing illustration work and design compilations for the apparel decoration and accessory industry. Uh, largely that is sublimation, white toner, screen print, etc. This is not a course that's geared for photographers is all I'm really trying to say. It is beginner friendly, includes one-on-one -on -one email support, has fun design challenges throughout with chances to win prizes, and you can save $30 on the course when you use the code sub that and follow the link in the video description. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to create a blueprint style or line style artwork from a photograph. Now you can do this with any type of photograph, people, place, thing, doesn't really matter, but this is a great idea to help you create an aesthetics collection that you can offer to your customers, which is why I wanted to do this tutorial just in time for the holiday season. I'm going to be working with a picture of the market house in downtown Fayetteville, North Carolina. As I said, you can use any picture, place, or thing. The main thing is that the better quality of the picture, the better higher resolution the picture, the better your results will be. And the better clean, the more clean the background is, as in it's not busy, there's not a bunch of people, etc., the smoother this process will go for you. So once you have your picture ready, let's go ahead and get started by opening that photograph directly into Affinity Photo. We will do this by coming to File and Open. I'm gonna select my picture of the market house from my File Explorer and then select Open. Your picture should show as a pixel layer. You can unlock it by clicking on the lock icon and if you're using Affinity One, you will see parentheses pixel next to where it says background. If you are using Affinity Two, you will see this little icon over to the left. And when you hover over it, it tells you that that layer type is a pixel. If for some reason yours doesn't say pixel, if it shows as uh, an image, then you are going to want to rasterize that. You can do that by selecting that layer and selecting the move tool, the one that looks like a cursor right click and choose rasterize. We don't need to do that because ours is already in a pixel format, but just for reference. The first thing that we want to do is use our selection brush tool to isolate the part of our graphic or of our photograph that we actually want to be turned into this blueprint or line art style. For me, that's just going to be market house itself. I don't want any of this background stuff. I don't want any of this street. So we'll zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see. And with our background layer selected, I am going to select my selection brush tool, which is this one that looks like a little paintbrush with a circle. One thing I wanna note just quickly is that my interface may look a little bit different than yours, and that is because I have my interface set out for my preferred workflow. If you have taken the Affinity Photo Masterclass, then we cover all of this in there. If you're using the Mac version of the software, you do not have the ability to toggle 
your additional panels over here on the side, but you can have them floating. Your layers panel may be somewhere over in this general area by default otherwise. So with my background layer selected, I'm going to select my selection brush tool and I'm going to go ahead and brush over all of the areas that I want to include. Make sure this is set to add. And I like to have snap to edges check marked. I find that it just makes the process go a little bit better. So I'm going to go over this. I've got a pretty big nozzle at the moment. I'm going to try and get as much as I can with that before shrinking it down. Okay, I'm going to zoom in in my area down here so I can see a little bit better. I don't really want this inside part. I really am just kind of going for the arches just to create the whole aesthetic that I'm going for. But I think we might have to take some of it in. So go ahead and get along that. And remember, all you're doing is just clicking and dragging that brush. If you have some areas where you get a little bit too far, go ahead and switch over to subtract. And then you can just clean it up there. And if you need to adjust your nozzle size, you can come up here to the slider and you can just decrease it on down and then come back. I'm going to switch back to add here. And we want to make sure we get all of it in. I don't want to get any of this background stuff. I also don't really want any of this, um, these planters. Fun fact, for those of you who don't really know Laura, she's one of the silent but effective admins of Sub That. She is part of the horticulture program here in Fayetteville, and she and her classmates actually do all of these planters. This is a picture of their work. Uh, this is not a picture from them. I found this picture on Google, but uh, all right, let's come back to our subtract. We're going to cut out Laura's planters nonetheless because we just don't need them. Now, I'm not too worried about getting rid of some of this in the middle. Actually, I would like to do a little bit more of that because I'm looking to have the least complexities in my end result. Because that's just going to make our overall, our overall uh, sketch look a little bit better. I'm going to leave this in just because you can see so much inside of the market house. It may or may not make a difference. But I'm going to come back to subtract and subtract out this a little bit. And I'll leave this end one as well. Remember, you can just come back over and click to clean up any little spots that you might have missed. Or sometimes when the software gets a little too jumpy there. All right, and then we'll scroll up to the top here and see where else we just need to clean it up. Um, technically, I could go a little bit more here, but I think that this is pretty fine. That edge is kind of soft. I do want to get the rest of that little part. And I'm going to take away that section there. See if I can get this. You can also increase and decrease the size of your nozzle by using the bracket keys that look like little staples on your keyboard. So I am going to try and possibly get a little bit more of this. When you have areas that don't have good resolution, it makes it very difficult for the software to pick up the tiny little differences that you're trying to make. But I think we got good outline. It's looking pretty good to me. We're going to make it easier for ourselves and also give the software a chance to have a second look by clicking on this refine option right here. So what you'll see is a red background applied and what's not covered in red is what is your selection area. This looks great. I don't see anything that needs to be adjusted. So down here where it says output, I'm going to select the drop down, choose new layer and click apply. Now this will automatically put our selection into its own new layer and you'll see that the background layer is below. It's still in our layers panel. It's just not visible. And we can see that by the circle that is 
lighter colored versus filled when it's visible. Before it was an eye, now it's a circle. So if you're using the 1.0 version, you'll see a little eye there. And if you're using the 2.0, you'll see this little circle. So we wanna make sure we have our move tool selected for the rest of what we're gonna be doing here. We are going to simply apply a series of filters and adjustments to give the look that we want. That starts with a detect edges filter. So with your pixel layer selected, the selection that we've created, you're gonna come up to filters, you're gonna choose detect, and you're gonna choose detect edges. Now immediately, this is going to give your picture this, uh, well, this black and white almost sort of look. You can see a little bit of color in there. That's just because of how this filter works. It's not converting it to black and white. It's detecting the edge of pixels throughout. So this is a fairly detailed image. If this was simpler, if there wasn't like a lot of texture from the brick of the market house, then this would look a bit cleaner, but you know, we're working with what we have, that's part of the whole process. So I think that this is good as it is. So with that layer selected, next we're gonna come down to our adjustments panel. And the first adjustment that we are going to add is going to be a curves adjustment. So you'll come down and you will find curves, right somewhere about the middle is where the curves is. Now this is going to allow us to sharpen up the blacks and whites. You see this little gradient that we've got here and you simply are going to just drag the line and you can add additional nodes onto this or stop points as they're called by clicking on the line and then you can drag that one. So you'll notice as you move it around, you're going to get some different results. The main thing is that we're looking to increase the contrast between the black and the white so that we can see a pretty clear distinction and some sharper lines. There's no special formula for this. It, depending on the picture you're using, will dictate where you move this line. The best thing to do is just create those two stop points and sort of move it around until you are satisfied. And also just keep in mind that you can, in fact, uh, move these afterwards because this is a non-destructive filter option that we're using, so you do have that ability. And if for some reason you're just not happy with it, you can just choose to delete it and you can then apply one again. So you just come to that half moon icon and select that curves filter. And again, I'm just gonna adjust this down a little bit to give me a bit more richer black. And I'm gonna add that other stop point there. I'll move that one up. That's pretty good for right now. So once we're all happy with it, you're just gonna click the X. Do not click merge on this because we wanna be able to come back to it later on and make other adjustments. So you'll see it's right here in our drop down where that little arrow is, it is clipped with our pixel layer. That's what we want. Our next adjustment is going to be to add a black and white adjustment. So same thing, select your layer, come down to your adjustments panel with the half moon icon, select the option for black and white. You'll notice almost immediately that this gets rid of those weird color hues that we were seeing. They might have been a little difficult to see in the video, but it immediately gets rid of them. If for some reason you're still seeing them, you can simply adjust these up or down. I'm gonna move them all the way up because this is gonna clean up some additional lines throughout there. And just help give us a completely black and white version. Once again, we will click on the X, do not select the merge in case you want to be able to edit it later on. Once you merge something, it becomes finalized with that layer. So anytime you can choose the non-destructive options where you still have them available and you can easily remove them, that's gonna be your favored choice because it's gonna give you way more control over refining your work as you continue your creative process. The next adjustment that we wanna add is an invert adjustment. So with that pixel layer selected, again to the adjustments panel where that half moon icon is and select invert. And this is reversing the white and the black to give us that sketch outline that we like. At this point, you may wanna add a white background just to give you a better visual. 
uh, you can actually do this by coming to document and then deselecting transparent background. And this will give you a good idea if you plan on using this on any type of sublimation item that's already white, this will give you an idea of how it's going to look. So from here, you just want to refine your work. This is not terrible. There's a lot going on. I definitely think I could clean it up a little bit and make it better. So I'm mainly going to come to this curves adjustment. We can double click on the icon and it'll pop open that panel. And then we can go ahead and adjust from there. So you're going to click your stop points or click along the line and you can move them until you are completely satisfied with the overall look that you are getting for your project. As I mentioned before, this is going to look a little bit different depending on what your photo is. Don't expect it to be a cut and dry process or the same settings for every one. We're mainly going to get a reasonable amount of crispness is kind of what we're looking for here by increasing that contrast. And I'm going for a bit of like an architectural line print, which this would have, this would be cleaned up a bit more. Um, you could choose to clean it up with your erase brush tool. I'm not going to do that because I want to maintain that brick of the marketplace, of the market house. I'm just going to adjust these just a little bit. I think right about there, I am pretty satisfied with it. So once you have finalized those little adjustments, you're done. This is ready to export. I would recommend, of course, exporting it with a transparent background. So come up to document and check that transparent background again. And then you can select just the layer if that's the only part that you want to be extracting. And you can then go to, with that layer selected, come to File, Export. And we're going to choose PNG. The export panel does look a little bit different. It doesn't have the icons anymore. It has this little drop down, but the defaults are all the same. So we'll choose our PNG setting. And then where it says area, because I don't want all of this dead space, I'm going to choose selection only. And it gives us this great preview, which I'm loving this new feature in the 2.0 version. And then you can go ahead and click export and save it in your file explorer. Now keep in mind, that when you export, you are not saving your working file to come back to. If you think that you want to revisit this project, then make sure you go to File and Save As, and that will give you the option to save the Affinity Photo formatted file so that you can come back and make additional changes here as you would like. Otherwise, when you export, you're only exporting that layer. You are not saving any of this work. So just keep that in mind for your project. Once you do something like this, you have the ability to put this on anything that you might print. The idea with this tutorial is that if you lived in an area where there were several items of significance, whether that is people, places, or things, you are then able to create a collection of products such as coffee mugs and ornaments that you can sell at a higher price because they are representative of your immediate area. So be sure to check out the blog post linked in this video where I talked all about that for this holiday season. Otherwise, the possibilities are endless with what you can do with this blueprint style sketch effect. And if you give it a try, be sure to show us in sub that we would love to see it. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to check out the link for the Affinity Photo Digital Graphic Design Masterclass for Sublimation in the video description below.